Hey guys, it's Doc, and it is 6.55 a.m. and I'm out here shooting a video. And I want you to know that only one person was injured in the making of this video. Today we're going to talk about some summer lawn care tips. And I'm going to break this video into a couple different segments. So hold on one sec, I'll tell you what's going on. Hey guys, so I'm going to go over some tips and I'm going to share some research that's sort of been building over the past couple months, especially about summer lawn care and the heat, especially with Bermuda grass. And I'm going to break this into segments because I've been shooting video for the past couple days and I'm kind of trying to figure out how to put this all together. I really don't know. <laughs> so I figure what I do is I break it into segments. So I'm going to do three different segments. I'm gonna do a segment about watering schedules and some experimentation that started last year and has continued to this year that we've done. I'll give you some progress reports on that. Kind of a change of thought process on watering your Bermuda and watering your lawns. So that'll be one segment. The next segment is gonna be on fertilizing. Uh, of course, the standard philosophy is, is you never fertilize in the summertime. Well, we're gonna sort of show you some of the research that we've done out here and testing we've done here it's pretty amazing so we'll break out some of that fertilizer information then uh, just a quick little thing on cutting cutting heights in the summertime you know a lot of times what we do is we go through a period of a drought and we let the lawn come up too high and then we got a bunch of rain coming in and so we go out there in a mad rush and we cut the grass down and it's just a mess so I'm gonna go over basically what I had to deal with the other day so those are the three segments. So if you just want to watch one of them, you can watch one of them and I'll break it up so you can so you can see it easily. So the girls and I are out here walking. <laughs> the Jack Russell's looking for cicadas down by the pool. She loves to eat them. Uh, okay, so what's the accident? This was no boat accident. Did you notify the Coast Guard about this? No, it was only local jurisdiction. If you ever told me that I'd get injured on a riding lawnmower, I'd tell you you're crazy, but I was in a hurry because I had to cut all three lawns. I had to do my lawn, actually four, my lawn, barbs, the world's worst, and then the test strip. And over in that test strip is kind of a raw area and there's some kind of cement block back there. And I was just going along on the ride deer, John Deere, John Deere, and I hit that block and it stopped my tractor dead. It hit the deck. And I went forward and sprained my wrist. And I was like, holy cow, man, that hurts. <laughs> it's stupid. But man, I'm just telling you, it's the stupidest little accidents that'll get you. So anyways, uh, I haven't inspected the John Deere yet to see, if the, to see if the deck got damaged at all and see maybe if bolts got bent or something. But that's my next project later today, probably, or later in the week. Uh, so we're going to break this video into three sections again. I'm going to do some watering information, fertilizer information, and then we're going to do um, the cutting information. So before I begin, of course, uh, I put up a video, Amazon Prime Days, Amazon Prime Days, I kept saying June, it's July 15th and 16th. We put up a web page to show you all the products. Anderson's gave us sort of a, 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 a pre-look at what they're going to be putting on special. So I put a list of their stuff. If uh, There's a whole video there that explains that. Check that out. Also, July 15th is our giveaway date for our PGF Complete. You only have to do two things. You have to be a subscriber and go over to the webpage and sign up for the email alerts. And on that Amazon thing, I actually put a, another sign up there so you can find it easy. But it's just two things. Do those two things and you're registered for our giveaways from now on. That's it. It's real simple. Uh, the $2,000 reel mower is August 15th, and we're going to be doing a spreader, and we'll be doing more stuff throughout the, the late summer and the fall, too. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is watering, but there's a couple things we need to understand when we're talking about watering. Every lawn is a little bit different. Age of the lawn matters. Time of the year matters. A bunch of different variables. So let's talk about it for a sec. Okay, so keep this in mind. If you have brand new seed or brand new sod, it's completely different. You've got to keep, matter of fact, when you install new sod, you have to water like three or four times a day for the first week, and then you bring that down based on um, a few different factors. So we're not talking necessarily about new sod and new seed. If you have a young lawn, you also want to encourage root growth, so you want deeper watering. So in other words, uh, you, want, you want less frequent waterings, and you want them deeper. 
But here's what we're learning on established lawns. So if you have an established lawn, especially a fairly healthy lawn, frequent waterings are often better during drought periods than the deeper cycles. And I'm gonna explain why here in a sec. Okay, so here's what we've been playing with. And this started last year, and then this year we had a pretty severe drought, four or five weeks with no rain. And then we just had another small kind of drought, two and a half weeks, really without any rain. And the philosophy is you're better off to do fewer watering sessions and make that a real deep water versus frequent waterings. And what we've learned through experimentation through these drought periods with an established, with a more established lawn is that's not necessarily always the case. Look, if you have a perfect lawn that's been, when it was installed, was completely done up and landscaped and done beautifully, but the majority of people, their lawns, you don't have that. What you have is you have roots that are growing over here. You have construction debris under the lawn. You have septic areas. You have different areas that just um, have a bunch of crap basically under the surface and they're hot spots. So I did a video, I've actually done two videos about hot spots in your lawn and identifying those hot spots and identifying that there's not a whole lot you can do because it's subsurface. There's something under the surface. One of the things I finally did this year during this drought, this current drought, two and a half, getting close to three weeks without really out any rain, is I stopped all my deep water cycling. Now this goes back to my golf course days and understanding what we used to do there. And we did what we call sort of a healing watering where if you put a plant out, let me give you an example. If you put a plant out on your deck and it sits out there all day long in the boiling sun, what's gonna happen? That plant's gonna sort of wilt and sort of go, oh, I can't stand this. Well, your grass and your lawn is doing the same sort of thing. And so what do you do? You go out there and you see the leaves are drooping, you give it some water. Well, the same thing, I'm out here having to water some of my potted plants and garden flowers almost every single day in this drought and this heat. The same thing with the lawn. So what we started doing is, like on golf course greens that don't hold a lot of water, two or three times a day, we would always go out with the hose and give them a healing watering, a cooling watering to keep them from burning out. Well, we're doing the same thing on our lawns this year. I'm testing this and what I'm doing is at 4 p.m. every single day, I'm having a short cycle run between say eight minutes and 12 minutes on every station that I have. So I do, I have it programmed that every single day at 4 p.m. I have a short cycle run on my entire lawn. And that's all I've done through this drought. And my lawn looks the best it's ever looked. So I'm not gonna go and say this research and that research, I'm gonna show you results. That's what I'm gonna show you. So we've been playing with this. When we actually, normally we have a deep cycle and then these short cycles, well I cut out the deep cycles. And that's kind of what we used to do on a lot of the courses. We used to let Mother Nature, the heavy rains, do that deep, deep, deep watering. And then the short cycles, in between those, what we do is we just give it enough water just to keep it healthy, keep it healthy until a rainstorm would come by. And that has really worked out. I'm actually using less water. Um, my lawn looks healthy. My, my burnout spots are almost non-existent. I've got a corner over here that has a lot of tree roots that every year I struggle with it. But this year, but this, uh, it, it looks great. Bermuda grass is a little bit different than fescue. Um, Bermuda grass roots, if you have an established lawn, <laughs> I mean, the majority of your roots are gonna be in the six inch to eight inch depth, but you can have Bermuda grass roots that go two, four, six feet, even six feet deep. That's right, you can even, Bermuda grass roots can go feet deep, not just inches deep. So if you have a lawn like mine, mine's probably, I don't know, was this 12, 13 years old, something like this? since it was put down, it's got deep roots. I don't have to worry about that. What I have to worry about is just getting by those days where it's just burning, burning hot. I just have to sort of just give it that little bit of cooling, that little bit of healing. Remember, it's like the potted plant that you got outside. If you're not out there every day giving it some water, you're gonna run into problems. The same thing with your lawn. I'm gonna encourage you, if you have an established lawn, to try this method. The next drought you have come up, just do that short cycle, short cycle, short cycle. Now, some people are gonna say, well, what about fungus? You're gonna encourage fungus growth. Look, fungicides are cheap. I put out a fungicide last month. I don't have any fungus in my lawn, and I've been doing this short cycle watering for the past two and a half weeks. I have no issues. 
Okay, I'm gonna pop in here with another little tip. Uh, you have these crazy little thunderstorms that come by in the afternoon and they're usually not big thunderstorms. It's not like they last for like two or three hours. It's like minutes. The question is, is how much rain did I actually get on my lawn? Did I get an eighth of an inch or did I get an inch and a half? <laughs> you never know. In the middle of the night, you go to sleep and you hear thunder. Well, how much rain did I get? You're at work. Did my lawn actually get it? Come home, it looks a little wet or maybe it's dried off. Did I get any rain? You don't know that exact weather pattern. I swear to God, <clears throat> I've watched thunderstorms go by on the down the neighborhood and the front of the neighborhood gets a ton of rain and down here we didn't get any. So let me show you a quick little tip that'll help you out. Uh, and all I do, I keep, a little, I keep a little bucket out here and I keep a five gallon bucket away from the roof line over here. I keep a five gallon bucket outside. In the morning when I wake up, I come out to my truck I can tell how much rain I got. When I come home in the afternoon, I know how much rain I got, and I empty it out after every rain. If I get more, if I get less than a quarter of an inch, I don't touch my sprinkler system. If I get more than that, then, I, then I'll go ahead and alter that pattern. But it's important to understand that you don't really know, unless you're sitting here at the house watching that rain, another video clip, watching that rainfall going, come on rain, keep raining, keep raining, and it only lasts for 45 seconds, you just gotta have some way of telling. So, and it's really localized to your individual property. So put some kind of stupid rain gauge, even if it's a bucket outside, so you can tell how much rain you got. All right, so we're gonna move on to fertilizer and I'm gonna have to break this up so you can understand this. First of all is understanding that when people talk about fertilizing in the summer, they're assuming that you're gonna to run to a big box store and you're gonna buy a 3000, 3005, strong nitrogen content, one source of nitrogen, and you're gonna put that on your lawn, you're gonna have a couple days of rain, then you're gonna hit a drought and what happens? You get a nitrogen surge and you end up risking a nitrogen burn. So that's why people say, don't put out fertilizer in the summertime. The other thing is, is when you get that nitrogen surge, you have a tendency to create a lot of energy in your grass. So the grass is just like putting all of its energy and creating energy when it doesn't need to be creating energy into growth. So that's why people say in the summertime, pull back on your, on your fertilizer. Now, typically what I would say is, and it's a good thing to do, is if you want to switch over to organics, switch over to organics in the summertime. There's links on the website for our organic that we recommend. It's a very, very mild um, level of, of fertilizer. It's only a 712, which means that only 7% uh, nitrogen is getting down to your lawn. So organics are great during the summer, but with the new PGF Complete fertilizer, here's what we've learned. The PGF Complete is an overall health fertilizer, so it has nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It has iron. It has humic acid, humic DG, it has your micros, it has everything that your lawn needs for good health and your soil needs for good health. Don't forget, when you put down humic DG, uh, there's been a lot of studies out there that have been conducted, especially overseas, on, on crops. And you can reduce the amount of fertilizer you use by almost 50% and have almost a 50% greater crop yield. So what it does is it makes your soil and your plants use everything more efficiently. So based on that, when you put down when you put down PGF complete, you're putting down a very mild fertilizer. Most fertilizers, if you look at the bag, it's one pound per thousand square feet of nitrogen is what you're putting down. PGF complete is a lot less. It's only 0.58 pounds per thousand square feet. In addition, there are three forms of nitrogen. And those three forms of nitrogen all release differently. Some are based on water solubility, some are not. Some actually have to have microbial action inside of it. So it's a very slow, smooth release. Plus you're putting down iron, plus you're putting down micros, you're putting down the humic. And here's what we've learned. We've learned that we can put down the PGF complete in the summertime and our lawn becomes healthy. So the actual plant becomes healthy without over energizing it or without overfeeding it and that's what we've learned with these test areas and these test strips that we've done 
we've put over like the stress area over here, I'm going to show you this in a second. That stress area has had three treatments of PGF during hot drought periods and hot times with no irrigation and it looks beautiful. The test strips, I'll show you when we went out and we cut these test strips. Now the test strips were done before the drought. They went through a drought without any water. So I've got a test strip and the yard beside it that have had the exact same treatment. And guess what? The test strips are almost twice as long. They're dark, they're green, and they're healthy, where the grass area next to it is not. Again, they've both been, those areas have both been through the same lack of water, the same heat, the same stress, and there isn't any nitrogen burn, and there isn't any damage. In fact, if I had done the entire area, the entire area would look that nice. So it's important to understand that, yes, you can put down PGF Complete, and you can put it down in the summertime, and you're not going to have burning, and you're going to have a healthy lawn. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird thing to be saying putting fertilizer on your lawn in the summertime, but you can do it. Yes, we still use Super Juice. Now I want to explain something about Super Juice. Remember, granulars are base base feeding products. Super Juice is a mild supplement. Super Juice has sea kelp and humic and a bunch of different stuff in there that really helps your lawn in the summertime. So still keep up your Super Juice treatments. Maybe every two or three weeks put out a 712 spray. But um, I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you the, the stress area and I'm going to show you the strips. And you're going to notice and you're going to see that these strips really have done well through this drought period. All right, so I'm over here cutting. I cut barbs. <clears throat> The front's fine, the back, man, what a bunch of clippings. That's what happens when you let these lawns go. Certain areas get long, you get all these clippings, so I'll probably have to bag a little bit in her back. But I want to show you something interesting. Now this goes to the PGF Complete. This is the granular fertilizer, which is very mild. Most fertilizers are one pound per thousand square feet. PGF is like 0.58 pounds per thousand square feet. It's three forms of nitrogen, and they all release at different times. And I'm not saying that's some drought cure, but I want to show you that if you put down a mild fertilizer, you're at no more risk of burnout as a lawn without it during drought periods. And let me show you what I mean. If you saw my lawn graffiti over here, you'll understand now. Okay, so three or four weeks ago, we spelled out PGF and we watered the whole lawn. Since then, we haven't given it any water. But I want you to look at something is pretty cool so again the whole lawn is stressing out but look where this line is that was a test line the grass is about that much taller and it's thick and green underneath when I cut it see the cut line I've cut right here so again the PGF this is the P it's about two inches taller than the rest of the grass and when I cut it it looks a lot healthier too it's thicker, it's fuller, it's greener. So that has fertilizer on it right here. That does not. Okay, so here's the G. You can see it's longer and thicker and it's much healthier down here. And here's the F, kind of F looking. <laughs> Same thing. So. It's a good example. If you look at it, you can see it this way. It's nice, dark, and green full here where I've cut it. Next to it is not. So, does putting down granular, a good, light, mild granular fertilizer put your lawn at risk in the summertime? Not really. What they're talking about, what most people are talking about, are standard fertilizers that tell you to put down, you know, one pound per thousand square feet of a granular fertilizer. And that's just way too much in the summertime because you get a thunderstorm or two come by, you get this big nitrogen release and you can get burn and stress. Not with the PGF, that's what we're finding. We're finding it's very mild and you can put it out in the summertime. So it's interesting to see those strips. All right, let me show you this. I just finished cutting this. This is pretty amazing here. So this is our stress area where we triple coated PGF complete. And uh, this has no irrigation, no water. It's been through a two and a half week drought and it's common Bermuda. Look at it. I just cut it. I haven't cut it for a while. Now the growth did slow down during the drought, but look at it. Look how it's sustained. I want you to see this. That is probably the most impressive thing I have seen today, 
right there. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> so this is this that's our test stripe. You can see the rest of this lawn is fairly short, kind of burning out. And look at that PGF area. Look at it. This is the PGF complete. You can see some seed heads popping up here. But that's the PGF complete area. And then this is the other area over here where it's like kind of all the rest of the lawn looks like this. It's just really cool. All right, so what's the summary here? The summary point is simple. If you have a lawn care company come out and spray a strong nitrogen spray on your lawn in the summertime with this heat and drought conditions, is your lawn gonna get a nitrogen burn? Yes, it will. If you use something like a super juice, which is a very, very mild supplement, no, it will not. If you go buy a fertilizer that's something like a 3005 that has one pound of nitrogen, per thousand square feet and has one form of nitrogen and you put it out in your lawn, do you risk burning your lawn? Yeah, you might actually risk burning your lawn. If you use something like PGF Complete, which is very mild, which is almost half that strength, and has three forms of different nitrogen and is smooth and contains humic acid, the micros, the iron, and everything else, no, you're probably not any, at any more risk of burning your lawn than the rest of your lawn. Matter of fact, you're actually giving your lawn things that it needs to be more drought tolerant and to be healthier. It is phenomenal. I mean, it's just that dark, dark green that you're gonna see without the stress and without the burning. So, again, <laughs> this has been a long time in development and not just on my end, but also on the Andersons, some of the stuff they've been doing. So, uh, again, I strongly recommend PGF Complete. Put a little super juice down, you'll be all set. Now let's move on to cutting. Stupid, stupid, stupid summer weather. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all done it. You see that 50, 40, 50% 50 chance, of, chance of thunderstorms. You pull up your phone. You look at your radar. And here comes this storm. It's coming right at you and it disappears. <laughs> or you look down the street and you can see all this rain falling down the street and your yard doesn't get anything. Ah, this is the most frustrating thing. I actually took the drone up. I'll show you here in a minute. I'm waiting on this thunderstorm, I'm waiting on this thunderstorm. I actually took the drone up and was actually watching the thunderstorm with my drone to say, are you going to come this way or not? That means it just, it's gotten to that point. It's just like, come on, man, rain. But here's the problem with the summer weather patterns when you get into this hot. You know, you're, you haven't had rain in a week and a half and you're concerned about your lawn, so you don't want to cut it short. You don't want to really cut. It's looking nice, it's thick. And you're like, man, if I cut this and I don't get any rain, I'm going to get some burnout. And trust me, I get the same thing. I think about it all the time. I'm like, should I cut it? Should I not cut it? Well, what ends up happening is you fall into that long grass, that long grass trap where your grass starts to get longer and longer during the summer. And trust me, we've all been there. And now all of a sudden you got this long Bermuda <laughs> that's supposed to be short. And you're like, okay, what do I do? Do I cut it now? Am I gonna have rain? It's a complex situation. So anyways, let me just tell you what I had to deal with and I'm gonna put up some footage. Um, I left Barb's and the world's worst for almost two weeks without cutting them. We haven't had rain, no irrigation. I'm just gonna leave it. Well, her front yard was okay. The backyard, man, it got really long because it's shaded back there. So I had all these clippings I had to deal with. Well, my front yard, Unfortunately, I let get a little bit long, and so I said, well, I'm going to take it down because I know I got thunderstorms coming in. So I came out here, and I cut it with a real mower once, and I was like, man, I'm starting to cut this stuff, and look at all these clippings. So I came up with this little thing where I decided to, what I was going to do is I'm going to cut it with a reel, and then go back up and suck it up with my John Deere, the clippings, because it was just too much of a hassle to use the front clipper. There were so many clippings. Then I ended up looking at it and saying, that doesn't look right. That looks kind of uneven. So I had to go back and cut it again with the real mower and then cut it and then pick up the clippings again. It was just crazy. So it was a crazy day in my front yard. So I figured I'd go ahead and just show you what I was dealing with that day. 
But this is the kind of thing that you have to deal with during the summertime. You have to manage your heights and you have to kind of look at your 10 day forecast, your five day forecast and your hour, even down to your hourly forecast. All right, so let me explain what I'm doing here today. Uh, because of the drought, my grass has been just getting long. It keeps getting long. I want to reel cut it. I don't want to cut it with my John Deere in the front because the John Deere will scalp, even though I've got all the scalp wheels. I can't take it down a certain depth to a certain height without it scalping. It's just my lawn. It's crappy. But when I want to take it down that low with the reel mower, I get a ton of clippings. And let me tell you what. I started bagging out here. Dude, I'm not going to sit here. You got every single pass, I got to stop and empty this bagger. Now I'm cutting low, so my grass is going to be ugly. Warning you. It's going to be a lot of yellow and brown. It's, I'm taking it down. I mean, for a summer drought conditions, that's where I'm taking it. What, three quarters of an inch? So here's the lawn, and it looks great. It's all long and fuzzy, but that's not what Bermuda. So here's the, uh, here's the real mower I'm cutting with, the true cut. There's a link to it on our website. Here's the front catcher. The problem is, is the problem is, is that this one piece was two full bags of clippings. So that means every time I go down, I got to stop. Every time I come back, I got to stop and I got to empty that thing. It's about 98 degrees out here. I ain't doing that. So here's what I'm going to do. You can see how I'm cutting it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the clippings on and then I'm going to come back with my John Deere set up high with the baggers on it. So the John Deere will not be cutting any grass. It'll just be sort of sucking up clippings. I'm going to sort of hover over all of it and suck up clippings. So it's a pretty dramatic cut. I don't know if you can see it or not, but... Oh man, the grass is way too long. quadruple it's patented holy crap so there it is four time cut that's pretty darn nice there it's a little yellow from being scalped down but man that's just pretty so look what I got blue skies Looks like I might have a storm coming, so I gotta haul ass. Yeah, I gotta cut the backyard. All right, so um, Anderson's is supposed to be coming out with a new spreader, and good quality spreaders are gonna have pneumatic tires on them, so they actually have air. So when you go along these bumps, it actually goes smooth, it can go over it, and that makes such a big difference versus plastic wheels. Uh, I did a review on this Agrifab, and for for the for a reasonably priced spreader, big spreader with pneumatic wheels, this is my overall winner right now. We'll see what how the other one does. But a uh, huge hopper, great pneumatic wheels. What is this thing? 160, 170 bucks or something like that. I forget. I'll put a link in the description to it. Great spreader, but I can fill this whole thing up and do my entire lawn just about. 
But let me show you the setting I'm going to start with. Um, this thing has a little adjustable slider. Now, don't go by this number because this can vary based on how you set this up on yours. But that's on about a four. And I want to show you the size of the slot. See how it's barely a quarter of an inch? That's what I want to do. You always want to start small. Remember, you can always go back out and put more in a couple weeks. So a lot of people, so a lot of people gripe about the smaller bags or 18 pound bags. I love the smaller bags. I just store them up in my cabinet in the garage and all I do is always measure out, go online, I put a link to a uh, square yardage calculator that's real simple to use. And then, uh, so I know, and just, if I have 5,000 square feet, I grab one bag, 10,000, two bag, you know, ballpark it, three bags for 15,000 square feet. And you're not opening up a huge 50 pound bag of fertilizer that you gotta try and store and you open it up a month later and it's full of clumps. Every time you're fertilizing, you're putting out humic DG. You're putting out iron. You're putting out 1648 phosphorus, excuse me, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. You're putting out micros. Uh, I believe there's six micros in here, 3% iron. And it's all in this tiny, tiny particle size, which gives you fantastic distribution. So that's why I love this stuff. Best fertilizer ever, period. Hey guys, I hope some of those tips have helped. Like I said, that was about two or three days of just work out here. It's hot and it's brutal, but remember those simple tips. Number one, try that little short wet watering schedule. Uh, if you gotta take down your lawn, do it stage by stage. Don't try and do it all at once. Pick up your clippings if you got a bunch of clippings that are gonna be on the lawn. And don't forget, give PGF complete a try. If nothing else, put out a test strip. That's all I want you to do. Just give it a try, it's fantastic stuff. I will give you a warning. And the warning is, is that we thought, uh, Anderson thought they had produced enough. I'm pretty sure that at some point, PGF is gonna go through some out of stock periods here coming up soon. So just a little heads up. Talk to you later, Doc. What are you doing? Are you enjoying the Bermuda? Hmm? You just sitting here enjoying the Bermuda? You always find a spot in the shade, don't you?